Well, of course yeah. not. Welcome to episode number 82 of the BEBC BS podcast. We're going to do a transposition today. 82? To 28. 28. Shout out to Jeremiah Dillard. Jeremiah. Woo-hoo. Heard your name a lot the other night. Yeah, we did. Attorney he was, Kicks. He was active. He was busy. We love it. Which is good. So, Jeremiah, this one's for you. So, enjoy your podcast that you probably won't even listen to. <laughs> <laughs> He's not on our list unless of our, five listeners. Yeah, unless our buddies Jacob and Coop let him know that he was talked about, he, he yeah. probably won't even listen to it. Yeah. We don't even know a nickname for him. We should know a nickname for him. For who? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. J.D. J. Dill. J. Dill. Yeah. Got to be careful there. <laughs> hey, we'll let it go at that. For those of you that are actually watching this as opposed to just listening, you can see we have a guest today. Yeah, we do. And he's going to be here for the duration, basically. Bond man. Bond man. That is Bond man. Bond man. B-O-N-D man. As you can see, he has in his hand, he has proposition A and B from the failed bond election that just occurred. Approximately 7,000 people voted. Of those 7,000, what is about 60%? 60% voted no. Which, let's just explain it this way. Alan has money in the bank. They just have to come to the to the to the voters and ask for permission to use the money that they already have. Put it out in bonds, pay the bonds back from the money that they have. It's not that hard. It's about maintaining your house. If your roof leaks, what do you do? You get your roof replaced. I mean but here, and again, for those of you that listened to last week's podcast, I thought Amy did a very good job. Maybe not she was did. on us for just a few minutes, and yeah. she explained the two buckets and how things work. And and the one bucket that handles teacher salaries and then maintenance and everything else for the for the school district, eighty four percent of that number mm-hmm. is for teacher salaries. We learned that last week. Mm-hmm. So and that's completely separate. You though it, that only leaves sixteen percent of of the operating budget mm-hmm. to handle utilities, repairs, and maintenance. Anything that, that needs to be done, right? Fuel for the be, fuel for the buses. Yeah, has to be done out of that bucket. Now, if y'all think about that, if if you take, um, let's we can, let's just use your house for example, and say okay. you have an operating budget and you have a capital improvement budget. Right. And you can't use the dollars from either one of them for the other bucket. Right. So let's, and I'm just going to throw this out. If if 84% of your operating budget was used to, and you shouldn't have this, trust me, as a CFO, you should not have this, <laughs> covers your mortgage. Yeah. Because that's, that's the big payment on your house, unless it's paid for. You have 16% of your bucket left to cover everything else going on with your house. Mm-hmm. Okay. Whatever it might be, you know, if you do... You know, yard care, you know, maintenance, utilities, insurance, all that other stuff has to come out of that 16%. So there's not a lot of dollars there to be wasted. Okay. So if you have something go bad wrong with your house or your house just is 20 years old, needs a new roof, new air conditioner, whatever air conditioner, in my case, new pool pumps. Yeah. You know, all of mine went out in the last year. Just stuff like that that has to come out of that capital improvement first first world problems i get it but you still can't ignore it you you can't or what happens that's what the voters of allen have done gets worse basically i and i i don't mean to be calling people out but i'm calling people out because that is what's happened because you have facilities that are in need of repair that are in need of improvement you know for here's a great example I was talking to Doc the other day. The washers that he has in the, in, in the athletic facility are the initial are the washers they had from day one. Now. That's been a heck of a lot more than 10, 12 years. Hello. Who still has a washer from 15 years ago? Now, there are some of you who do. I got I just got I just got rid of mine. It's six, 15 years old. Yeah. How many of you still have a 15 year old roof on your house? 
You know, how many of you still have the same furniture you had 15 years ago? How many of you have the same TVs you had 15 years when ago? Well, it's different. Okay, you got a 15-year-old roof on your house, but it's leaking. And you let it go. Or it's very damaged because of yeah, hailstorms hail. and yeah. stuff. Well, the facilities that were in the bond package are your house in this case. That is Allen ISD's house. We're not taking care of the house. And they're not. And, and you know... It's, and if we could have voted for it, we would have. James and I don't live in the district. It, it wasn't on our ballot out here, and we can't vote for it. So it was online. David voted, I know, and, and Nolan voted, and hopefully Thad did. I haven't talked about it. Alan was in the rehab, and he kind of... Did you see that? I did not see that, but oh, yeah, I did. <laughs> I responded to that. Professor Diggs. Oh, my God. But um, the voters, you know, the ones who did 60% voted no... The thing that bothers me the most is the apathy about it. You know, there's over a hundred thousand people now. And I don't know what the the voting population is, but to only have two thousand people vote for this bond package, yeah, I it, think it's uh, very disturbing. I think we had uh, what there's like seventy thousand registered voters. Where are we ISD. at? What's that, an eighth of the football stadium? It's yeah. like 10%. Well, you know, someone posted turnout. on Allen Eagle Nation, Inc., which, you know, I know a lot of you guys listen. They said if everybody in this club or in this group would have voted, it would have passed. Oh, easily. If they, if they would have voted, yes, it would have passed. You know, something as simple as that. You know, but... And here's what's fixing to happen, folks. And yeah. we have this from very good authority. And thank goodness. The tennis courts that the ISD allows for public use conservation the band field which they use for you know allow for public use right not much longer yeah it's a you safety gotta, issue safety yeah, it's issue. a safety issue they're gonna have to conserve it for the kids and you think oh well it's a safety issue why are the kids being let out there because they're monitored because they've got people out there looking out for them and making sure that yeah, they don't get hurt if cetera. something happens they can they can do something about it. And if you can't allow the public to use that to continue to wear down those facilities that are meant for the kids. and Get hurt and sue the district. And the public won't pass a right. bond package to get those things brought up to speed. Right. So for the next three years is what we were told the other night. Yep. These, yep. these bonds really can't bring up Can't bring bonds. it back up for three years. So it's another three years of wear and tear on every one of those facilities that was in the bond package. And when your child's out there on the football field and gets hurt because that turf or is so the, bad, yeah. it, you know, the way you fix that is you go vote and you vote yes. You know, and I know I, I, you see it. And again, you, you have to understand how school finance mm. works and how the tax rate works. And, and, you know, the ISD has done a good job of lowering the tax rate to the best they, they can Will my taxes go up? Yeah, well, we'll do the math. The math is because Collin County Appraisal District, you know, and I fight them every year, guys. It's it's ridiculous what they think your houses are worth, but that's what the market is right now. And so your taxes go up because of that valuation, not the tax rate. So the ISD is doing their part to continue to keep your taxes where they need to be by handling the rate. The valuation is on Collin County. You know, and if you're not educated about it, about what's going on and, and how it works, just ask. Get that way. You know, ask people. Yeah. Look, read about it. Or Look if it you up, just, come by and talk to us. Or yeah. if you're just being vindictive because you're ticked off at the district or yeah, whatever. There, there was a lot of protest whatever. votes. I, I promise you there were a lot of protest votes because everybody's mad about the way they handled the COVID and the mask mandate and this, that, and the other. But what yeah. what good did that do? God bless free speech, but don't take it out on the kids. Yeah. Well, you know... We all know that those kids wear the mask into the school, whether the parents drop them off or whatever, and they minute get in and they take it off, you know. Or let it you know, drop down by so, the chin, you know, yeah. the chin hole. Talk to your kids, you that are angry about the, the mask mandate. I guarantee you they don't, they don't wear it in the school. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how many do. Because you could just look around the stadium on a Friday night. And those hey. are the same kids that are in the school. We don't need no education. Yeah, none of them have masks on, as Pink Floyd hey, says. We don't need no thought control either. Come on. <laughs> exactly. So, anyhow, I was frustrated by it. It's It's been a rant I wanted to have all week long. Uh, if you didn't vote, shame on you. And 
I mean, so now you got it out of your system. Now, Imagine now having now, to go the whole week without. And now you're like, too embarrassed to tell anybody that you didn't. Yeah. So. What'd you say? Nothing. <laughs> I can go back and listen to this, and I will. Okay. So I'll, I'll know what you said later. So anyhow, guys, it's off the table for three years. Live with what you got. Congratulations. Um, if you don't Find like it. place else to run and play tennis. Yeah. Don't and be surprised. all those things. And, and for those of you talking to the, about equality, just remember, if you voted no or if you didn't vote, you know, the kids at Ford still don't have a track, you know, unlike the other two middle schools. So yeah. there's inequality in this district, and that was a way to fix part of it. And you chose not to, so shame on you. Yeah. Well, I'm just, I'm going to get some hate mail this week. Get it out, man. <laughs> Daddy. Yeah. I can see it now. Well, I, you know, and they'll, they'll come in a million reasons why they, they voted no, and none of them will have to do with anything related to what's in the bond package. Yeah. Yep. It's awful. And how, how, how long did they have to vote, too? Yeah. Two I mean, weeks of early voting, and then yeah. you had all day. Yeah. You know, so. And people just didn't show up. No so. excuse. No, no pride in the what Alan has done for the community. I know. So yeah. No bond, no pride. Yeah. Yeah. Send all the hate mail to Nolan Schrader. Yes. <laughs> He's got plenty of time to read it while in the movie. Stop. I mean, for goodness sakes, that could be Nolan in that hat with that bond package in his hand. There you go. But no, we've got, got, we got to do bond man. So bond man is going to be at every podcast. Until we get that passed. Oh, and if we have public he's, events, he's going to have to come to the public events. He might too. just do that. In fact, he'll be there next Friday night at the football game. If we can get him in. <laughs> hey, we've I got, got an extra buy tickets. A ticket. <laughs> yeah, just, just put that lanyard around his neck with his ticket on it. Okay, so uh, speaking of which, we got to mention this. So you've got until the season ticket holders. Yes. You can purchase your ticket yeah. for the playoff game. We know who we're going to be playing. Drum roll. <laughs> Hebron. Hebron. The Hebron Hawks. Uh, Hawks. Coach Brazel. Congratulations, Coach. <laughs> you are the winner. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome back. <laughs> and I don't know if Morris has any any relationship with Coach Brazel, but, you know, as far as previous history, et cetera, or whatever. Anyway, but look, we're going to have the playoff. The, the district champions, Allen was outright district champions because of the different, uh, you know, the different series and different, uh, you know, losses. Uh, everybody was two losses in the district except Allen. Allen was one loss, and that was to Prosper. So we're district champions. Part of that is that we now, get home field advantage no, no, no. for the playoffs. Yes? Guy only, only had one loss. Guy only had one but loss. But they lost to us. But they lost to us. Yes. Right. So we win the tiebreaker on that one. So we are outright district champions. Correct. 16 years in a row. There you go. So we get home field That's advantage. That's one record we got to keep. There yeah. we go. Home field advantage for the playoffs. <laughs> yes. Um, Geyer's going D2, so they get home field advantage for their part of the playoffs. Yep. And so there you go. We're going to be hosting Hebron in our uh, building at 7 o'clock on Friday. If on, you're a season on ticket holder. that not very good. Yeah, on that crappy turf. Thank you, voters. Uh, so Friday, 7 o'clock. Yes. You can buy your tickets if you are a season ticket holder. Yes. Go on to the ticket purchase website. Yeah. Secure Pay 12K. Okay? Yep. There you oh go. Secure gosh. Pay 12, and, 12K. And it's very confusing because they don't tell you how to do it, but it's the same way to go. Like if you're going to get your tickets for the game, go right. to my account, tickets and passes, I think it's called. Yep. Click on that. And when you go in there, you'll see the option to buy your seats. Right. And so you have to buy each individual seat. Each yes. individual seat. So do that by Tuesday because Wednesday in the morning, morning, if you don't buy your tickets, they're going to go up for sale to the general public. Bye so bye. Wave bye bye to your season ticket seats. Yeah. So buy your seats if you're not if you're not. Uh, and my seats will be available on the 47 yard line, upper deck, four <laughs> rows up. So yeah. Because David's gonna David's gonna come down and, and and sit with us. Because you know what, it's a lot so. more fun for us. And I I think I told Amy this too, that we sit together away games and we have a lot more fun than oh we do at home games. Yeah. Yeah. And my gosh, the mass exodus of all the band parents Friday night was unbelievable. Well, and not just band parents, I think it was everybody because the game was well oh, in Thursday hand. Night, Thursday yeah. night, yeah. I mean, there was a lot the of kids leaving, well but oh my gosh, it, the, School the night, stadium was. I thought the game was over. <laughs> bone dry, empty. <laughs> yeah, it was unbelievable. Speaking well, of which, we did. Well, you hear her say? Well, I was just going to say that's the advantage of being on the front row of the upper deck. Yeah, you don't have to look back or look down just, and see all the people that are side not to side. there. Yeah, right. so. They bail them like hey, man. They just boom, off they go. I know. All right. We did have a game Friday, Thursday night. Excuse yep, me. Thursday night. 
uh, senior night. It was a whooping. And congratulations, seniors. You you always do wonder, just like we did after the Atasca Cita game, how's this team going to respond to a loss? Right. And it was a brutal loss to Prosper. And it we'll was. get into what else happened in the district. A little bit of that. We won't night. we won't dwell on that because but that's past history. Just you know, to come up against a team in, in Braswell who's who's who reminds me a lot of Little Elm. Mm-hmm. To me, they're very similar. Right. If you look at their records, they score a lot of points, but their mm-hmm. defense isn't that good. Right. So you're thinking, okay, they're going to score a lot of points. You're going to need to keep up. Mm-hmm. You need to get those one, two, three, you know, two stops, three right. stops that'll make a, you know, a 14, 21 point mm-hmm. difference in the game. Like last year's game. I mean, they were, yeah. they were really good. They, they were blowing and going. And they had the number two rusher in, in 6A, uh, at least in the area. Um, You know, he had 1,600 yards, I was trying to – Jalen Burton, I was trying to yeah. remember his name. He had 1,600 yards coming into the game. Their receiver, Jerian Wallace, was one of the top receivers in the area. Big, tall kid, number one. Um, and you go, okay, you've got two weapons there. And so you're thinking, you you know, they've got a pretty decent quarterback if, they, mm-hmm. if this offense is running like it's supposed to. So. Not. <laughs> <laughs> Not. So it's, it's one of these um, – one of these games that, you, you know, you're like, okay, they've got to respond to a loss. It's for the district championship. You want to go into the playoffs on a good note. Right. You know, not losing two games in a row. Right. There's a lot of things that happen. You happened. have some key players that were not playing for whatever reason. You we did. won't talk about – we don't talk about injuries. And, and we talk about our injuries. Well, <laughs> yeah, but that's a whole different matter. <laughs> you know, to, to you out in the or public. Brain you know, injuries. Please don't talk about injuries because these are these are generally minors and they're kids yeah. and it's something that is usually yeah private. Quit, quit asking on Facebook private private about, private about injuries you know private message that stuff as opposed to putting it out there and you know it is what it is and you can find out it's very easy to find out it is easy um, if you spend any time at all you know up at the Talking school to or, people or, or yeah. the kids yeah. and. We'll get there, but it was one of those games that you, you kind of wonder, okay, what's going to happen? Got to say this before that. David and I were out at the tailgate. Uh-huh. Uh, and speaking of talking to kids, and, and you know, the, the guys come around 4, 4.30, mm-hmm. they have to report, and they always come by tailgate, grab a Gatorade, and off mm-hmm. they go. And we always chat with them for a little bit. We saw Jalen, you know, as everybody saw, he's walking fine. He wasn't on crutches. Mm-hmm. It's good to hear. We got the report from him. Off he went. And uh, our, our two new buddies, which I'm really, I'm wishing. <laughs> is, is Cooper, somebody look up. Is Cooper a senior this year? Cooper Cole. I, Cooper, I know I should know this, but I don't. Um, but Cooper Cole and Jacob Bradger. You looking up? Are two of They're our funny. favorite guys. I got it here. Um, yeah, he's got it. That we have gotten to know. And Cooper is a senior. And that's too bad because I wish those guys would come back because the more you get to know these kids, they're, they're so really funny. funny. They are so funny. <laughs> and they're just like the normal teenager, too. And, you know, we, we told them, you know, y'all do something on the field. We'll talk about it on the podcast. You know? <laughs> What's that? <laughs> that was a twitchy arm. Yeah. Have you ever gotten, have you ever gotten hit in <laughs> your funny bone? Yeah. <laughs> and so we tell the guys, but you, you know, do it in front of. Make a play. Yeah. You'll get talked about, yeah, you know. Yeah. We'll put in the highlights. It, was, it looked like he was asking for a handout. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that as it comes up here. But it's just good funny man. to talk to all these guys, you know, and and they're such teenagers, and it's they're, but they're good kids. And well, there's you, a group of four of them. Fun love like, them. Yeah, hang around. It's really cool. Yeah, Gorski's part of that group, you know. Uh, Gorski. Did he get a penalty the other night? He did. I asked him about it. It's pretty funny. So anyhow, Allen loses the toss again, and and. You know, that's for the hundredth time this year. Let's you know? talk about that. Play Which off. is fine because Chad Morris seems to be the kind of coach, if you win the toss, he wants the ball. And he took it. And if you lose the toss and the other team ends up deferring, he's like, great, I'll, I'll take the, the ball. Because you're feeding into his hands. I mean, why, you know, if that's your philosophy, go with it. Yeah, set the tone to, to start off. Yeah. You know? Get that touchdown. Braswell uh, kicks off. Our buddy Jacob yep. returns to kick off. 17 yards. They start their own 37. The first play from scrimmage, Turner runs for 26. You're like, ooh. Uh, yeah, strong. Um, after a one-yard run by Turner, Hawkins goes 16 to Jordan, and then another 15 to Jordan. And before you know it, you're 
uh, first and goal up to five. Hawkins loses three. And then Hawkins passes Jordan for eight yards. Eight. <laughs> Down. You know, six nothing, great, and then they go into their their <laughs> their typical. Are we going for two set up or not? And for the first like time all year, yeah. And here I am, turn turn my head, you know, and just he I missed it. the whole thing, and it was and no re of, it, and it, no replay. It was a thing of beauty, but uh, so insert the play here. It, <laughs> It, it just was a thing of beauty. Yeah, I mean, they they set up, think twice about it. Like, you know, they'll sit there yep. and, and look you know, back look, at the look for signals line, and right. this, that, and the other. Doing, which, is a, which is a whipping, you know. <laughs> they and lined up. The hurry up offense and stuff, you know. Yeah. They lined up, and within five seconds, Pitch the ball it, was snapped. Yeah. it, done. Done, and it was two-point conversion. You're like. Eight to nothing. Let's holy go. moly. You know, it. That was awesome. LFG, bro. It took two and a half minutes, and you're up eight to nothing, and you're like. Well, that was fun. Yeah, that was. And it was cool to see, and it, it just shows it can be done. So, yeah. guys, continue yeah. to do it. Don't sit there and think about it. Yeah. Do it. <laughs> so, Caden Williams, guess what he does? Hmm, kicks off. Guess what it is? <laughs> A touchback. No, no surprise there. They only had two all night that didn't. Make it down. Yeah, and when he was going north, yeah. he had a little. He got under a couple, I think, and and kind of just drifted them down there. But yeah. Braswell gets the ball. They're down eight nothing. Uh, hand off to their leading they rusher, and he I, loses a yard. They don't do a whole lot with it. What is eight play drive? Eighteen yards. Punt. 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 I'm okay with that. We love punters to get their time, but not on our side. We yep. don't like punting. Exactly. We did plenty of that, uh, you know, against Prosper. Eagles get the ball. Turner loses four yards on first down. Um, Hawkins completes a pass to our buddy Cooper for seven. Mm -hmm. At third and seven, he goes 49 yards to Jordan Tyson. It was beautiful. That was a nice pass. Yeah. Uh, first down at the Bengal 31. Uh, there's a penalty for unsportsmanlike conduct. What? On... on <laughs> For a late hit, Jordan was down, and the guy came in and piled on him. Um, so there's another 15 yards, so it's down to the 16. Uh, Hawkins rushes for one, and then he goes back to Jordan Tyson for another touchdown, yep, 15 which yard. was a beautiful pass into oh, the corner of the end zone. And I turned to James, and after it happened, I said, he didn't get a foot down. And James goes, oh, yes, he did. Oh, yes, he did. That's <laughs> right. I saw the replay somewhere and yeah well insert the play here yeah you got, got it, it so but yeah he did get his left foot down he did and i was like dang i okay. didn't see that when it happened that was right in front of us and i was like life happens fast if you does, blink man. if you blink turn your head you might miss it jordan if, got dinged up on that play yeah, and um i know i don't think he played the rest of the game which was fine he, we saw him after the game and he's fine but it was just well fun. and you know when he comes out when you come out and you're just not in the game, and then all of a sudden, when you're in street clothes, it's like, okay, well, he's not, he's, he's, he's not going. Yeah, when he comes out in his, what do you have, yellow or orange Crocs on? I'm like, I guess he's not playing. Yellow. I think those are DJ's Crocs. I think he stole them from DJ. Yeah, that's what you had asked him. <laughs> goes, huh? I said, what? I don't know what you mean, man. Uh, so it's 15 to nothing, uh, which is great. You know, with 3:53 left in the first quarter, you're mm -hmm. like, okay, you've got your two score lead. You know, let's not play with our food here tonight. Yep. Let's let's keep this going. Um, yeah, so we score, and then and, and Caden does another, you know, touchback. Right. Yeah, imagine that. Huh. So, Brazel gets the ball, and this time they do drive. And they drive down oh, to yeah. Eagle territory. They get first and 10 at the 18-yard line. And they're line. knocking. They're knocking on the door. They're in the in the, in the the plaster caster advanced. Uh, advanced plaster and tile red zone. This is not a commercial. Oh, not an endorsement. Well, I tell you, it's okay. We'll let it go. Anyway, so know. they're knocking on the door, right? <laughs> what happens? Defense steps up. Dude, that poor quarterback. <laughs> and we talked about him quite a bit at the game. He seemed to be fine throwing deep or over the middle, mm -hmm. but but trying to hit the out routes, 
he seemed to struggle. He threw yeah, it in the over, dirt. Keegan Bird. Dirt. Keegan Bird, their quarterback. Yeah. That ball that he threw, what it was, it was. It was a rainbow. And it was way short. Yeah. I mean, way short. It almost looks like his arm got hit. You know, the yeah. way, way it left. Way it just, and it just floated But nobody out was there. near him. Rainbow. So, sign Shuba says, I'll take that. And, and, and he saw some speed. 85 yards. Yeah, how about that cowbell? I watched that over and over again, and mm -hmm. hopefully this is a teaching moment for the um, the Braswell coaching staff. And I mean this with all sincerity, because yeah. if I was an Allen coach and this was reversed, I'd be really pissed, because the only person on the Braswell team that chased that guy down was a lineman. Yeah. And he got to about the 50, and he knew he wouldn't catch Couldn't. it, and he peeled off. The receiver, who actually went was almost out of bounds. Right. Didn't even stop. The quarterback? Nothing. Didn't move. The running backs? None of them. The only guy that chased him was a lineman. Yeah. And you're like, y'all just gave up. And and maybe that's a team who knows they're not going to the playoffs. That's, and, that's still bad. What if they caught him? No. But no. you know what? You never know what's going to happen. He might have tripped and fall. He, he might have fumbled. Dropped the ball. I mean, we've seen that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, People just and, be running and drop it and... So we saw that in 2006 when we were playing South Lake Carroll oh. at, at, at Texas Stadium. Yep. You know, a quarterback throws an, an interception, uh, you know, Nathan Dick, and the guy intercepts it, and he's running back, and Nathan Dick chases him down. And about the maybe 10-yard line, something like that, he lunges for him, throws his shoulder out. Yep. He's out for the game. And then yep. Stephen Payne comes in, and then, and then Matt Brown comes in. It was ugly. I just took a ride on the way and back then, machine. So you yeah. did. Who was it that uh, picked up a fumble or picked off a pass and took it back and dropped the ball before he actually oh, got in the Sean Jackson. Uh, yeah, the that, Eagles did that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But one of our kids has, has done that too. Yeah. So, and so it didn't get caught. That, it was on the big screen. At, it at was Cowboy on the yeah, stadium. The replay showed it, but the umpire, the uh, referee said touchdown. So yeah. I was shocked. The uh, 2009. Probably, maybe, the whole yeah. point is there was there was a real big lack of effort on their part. Yeah. They just threw up their hands and said, "Fine, except for the one kid." So kudos to the one kid. And um, that's got to be frustrating though as yeah. a coach because you know you can only motivate kids so much to to give that effort. So yeah. give that effort. So it's 22 to nothing still in the first quarter. Uh, 44 seconds left. Braswell gets the ball back, and they actually get down to the seven yard line and and they score. Um, Jalen Burton, they're, they're good running back scorers, and mm -hmm. so it's 22-7. to seven. Uh, Allen wastes no time in coming back. They go eight plays, 79 yards. Um, Turner has a, a, a big series this time. Yeah. Uh, he has over 50 yards. Uh, Devin, what an amazing he, – he's, he's gotten better and better yeah. as a runner. He I think really he's has. settled in. Running north. Yeah. Yeah. Quit your dancing. Yeah, take your, goes, take goes, your dancing shoes off. He goes to the outside, and then all of a sudden he just stops and turns on a dime and heads north. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's where he's picking up his yardage. It's it's and it, and it showed um, just his as he's, he's matured over the season, you know, and he's gotten a lot of playing time um, this season with with you know some injuries and people not being there. That's right. Um, but anyhow. He scores. Um, he has a big series, the next series. Uh, Cooper Cole catches two passes, one for seven, one for ten. Um, Lathan's in on this series. Yep, Lathan Ostall. Yeah. Ben Ostall. Ben Ostall. And he gets the touchdown on a five-yard run. <laughs> Way to go, Lathan. Yeah. Um, we love seeing it. Everybody needs to score. Yeah, you get a score. You get a score. Yeah, it's great when that oh, happens. Don't forget the uh, turnover bucket. 
Oh my yeah. gosh, that was awesome. <laughs> Gosh, we love that. It's we haven't gotten to see it very much, but yeah, yeah. Well, we got to see it twice. Yeah, twice, 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 yeah, twice yeah. this I mean, game, right there in front of us too. Yeah, sure. Great. And we'll we'll cut to the video on this one, but it's you know slam dunk in the in the in the turnover bucket, so or fumble bucket. I don't know what do they call it. It's the fumble. I, don't know. I haven't heard. Well, it, come by, come by tailgate. Turnover. Let us know. Yeah. Yeah, Coop. Let us know when you come to nice blue bucket. Yeah. The. Um, Bengals get the ball back down 29 to 7. They get to uh, their own 44 and on fourth and down, fourth and 15, they go for it. Oh no, they were going to punt. <laughs> and and gosh, he he Dingleberry drops drops the punt. And... Punter drops the ball and you look and it, it oh, looks scrambles. like he has John. some runs. Scrambles. He has all the room in the world to go ahead to and kick punt the ball. Yeah. And then he goes, "Oh, I'm going to run. I'm yeah. going to scramble." He had plenty of time to kick I the ball. I can make it. So every time we have thought or said, geez, maybe our rugby style kicker should, you know, run with the ball. Yeah. And and we've had a couple of people say, no. Yeah. No. No. No, no running with the ball. Let's not do that. And and we saw evidence of why. So, you know, yeah. the, the Braswell punter said, Got killed. Yeah. <laughs> so Allen takes over at midfield. Um, Hawkins completes the pass to Turner for 37 yards. They're penalized down to the two. Hawkins loses two on first down, and Turner runs it in for four. And you look up, and it's 36-7, to seven and you're like, this is exactly the game that this team needed. Exactly. Now, I don't Dominating know. Dominating. I tweeted sides of the out. Ball. I don't know if they were you just really, really focused or really, really mad. Whatever the reason was, they were taking it out on Braswell. Mm -hmm. It was good. So it's 36-7. to seven. Um, Braswell gets the ball back, and they lose. You know, they – they can't do anything with it. Again, fourth down and four, they punt to the 17. Um, Allen wastes no time, <laughs> which is good. Uh, Hawkins completes the pass to our buddy Cooper again, 35 mm -hmm. yards. We'll have that highlight. <laughs> And this is where this is where Cooper gets up, and they line up to play, and all of a sudden Cooper just falls to the ground. He, he's like kneeling, and then he yeah. and then he like falls to the ground, and he grabs his wrist, and we're like, uh -oh. and he's holding it out there, <laughs> and it's not moving. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, maybe there's feeling coming back, and he and he's he's, he's kind of sitting there. Going, so he comes to the sideline, and they work on him, this, that, and the other. Yeah. Well, we saw him after the game. We're like, dude, are you okay? He goes. Man, I hit my funny bone. It hurt. I just, <laughs> my whole arm was numb, but he did. He hit his funny bone. And I don't know when the last time you hit your funny bone. hit it really hard, though. It's been a long time since I've done that. Really I don't know if it's hard. an adult. It's a, I, I, it's a pretty good stinger. Yeah, but he, he And I said that. Feet. You'll hear it on the video. Yeah, oh, he's got a stinger. The, yeah. He's got a stinger. In the lower part of your hand, it's just like burning. You know? Yeah, so that's all he had was just... Just a funny bone issue. <laughs> so, we'll hope there's no lasting effect. And I yeah. told him, I said, I told you to do something to get attention. That's not what I had in mind. <laughs> he just giggled and laughed. Uh -huh. So good for him, though. He gets down to the bank of 33 yard line. Uh, we get two back to pack false start penalties. And that lineman gets yanked for that. Um, 76. Well, but we had some we had some passes to some not normal. Well, again, two guys. Tyson was out. Yeah. He, he wasn't playing subsequent to then, and so these guys are stepping up, you know, throwing right. the people that are open. Well, on the two-point conversion, it was Jordan Robert Roberson right. who scored that. Mm -hmm. um, speaking but he, of, had a com he had a completion on that series to Jordan Roberson. That was a success. Speaking of Roberson, the yeah. next play, he yeah. went 19 yards to him, and then he completed a, a pass to Rico, Rico Jackson. Jackson. What a great name. I love my, that. My, 
My wife said, did you say Dorico or Dorito? Said, Rico. 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 Come on. Dorito. <laughs> so, Mr. Jackson, if we call you Dorito, that's why. So Yeah. It's all it's all out of love, my friend. And then the run of the night was the next play. And this highlight is It was only sixteen yards. It was. But it was a tackle breakle breaking ankle shaking <laughs> tackle breakle. Shaking bacon. <laughs> you know, he did he he just had to do a little bit of shakel bacon. Oh my god! <laughs> At the end zone, and you know, oh. I don't know whether he he spoofed some people out of their shoes or, or their pants were down by their drawers. Or, I mean, you know, he, I, he started drawers. right, came back left. It, y'all just got to watch it. You yeah. know, he, so he we'll almost, insert that here. And, Up. Oh yeah! It didn't go down. It didn't go down. Scores on a 16-yard run. It showed such amazing effort and skill, and that's what we're talking about. In, in term earlier, y'all were talking about how he's improved and, and yep. just gotten better going upfield. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do a little bit of juking when you need to, but get upfield, yeah. and, and he did. Thing of awesome. beauty. Um, makes it 43 to seven. <laughs> Three minutes left in the half. You're just like, holy moly. Where does it end? Do we keep them from scoring again? All questions that need to be answered. <laughs> yeah. They do not score. They punt. Allen gets the ball back. Uh, and we have a fumble on the, the handoff exchange between Noah Kimball. Fumble Ruski. And the, the running back, Jaden Jordan, I think, on, was that. And so Braswell recovers. A little over a minute left. Yeah. And they score just before halftime uh, to make it 43-14. And um, so it was. It was a. It was a charity gift. It was their, you know, as far as scoring output, it was their best half of football since the Tyler Legacy yep, game. Absolutely. And that one, they had what three turnovers or four turnovers in the first half. They could have had fifty or sixty points in that That's game. Right. That's um, right. So it was good to see that. And the defense held this quote unquote potent offense to fourteen points. You had to feel really good to have to. Have, and I hope. Yep. And I think they did too. Which seven of which was kind of marginal because at that point they had already started doing the subs, uh, you know, massive subs sure. and rotations and, and whatever. And good for them that they did that. Um, you know, the whole second half, the game really slowed down. <laughs> and for a Thursday night game, it's the last thing you want. You know, you just want yep. the clock to run. Can but... we, can we one time, the coaches get together and agree on a running clock? Yeah. For real. In a case yeah. like this, you, you wish it had happened. Yeah. Um, but they were doing good. Both sides were tending to run a lot more, I think. Whether they were trying to run the clock out, I know we were, but every now and then we'd do a pass. Yep. Braswell gets the second half kickoff. Um, they fumble it. That's where the go, turnover trash can comes into play. Yeah. If y'all haven't seen that, it's just fun to watch the kids yeah, get we'll excited insert about the, it. We'll insert the play here. <laughs> can they all go nuts it's great and they got to find it you know the first one the, the you know the fumble recovery guy had to had to find the trash, the trash can, can and dunk it yeah the second one it the trash can was brought to the brought to them brought they to. knew what was happening and i think and the, that, and that the was the second Harvey. one was mr cisneros oh was recovered it? Okay. the fumble the recovered it or caused it Re recovered it okay, because 30, he got to dunk it 40, 48 40, 40, 43 i think 43 okay i may be wrong we'll see in the video yeah, yeah. his dad Sits in my seats every week, so I, I, that's how cool. I know who that was. That's awesome. Oh, I found it again! And we got it! Number 82, Logan Murphy, recovered by number 43, Sam Cisneros. First and 10, Eagle. Allen 
gets the ball, they get a 10-yard holding penalty, throw an incomplete pass, and on second and 20 from the 48, uh, Hawkins, on a quarterback keeper, goes up the middle uh, for a touchdown. <laughs> Six seven minutes left in the third quarter. It's fifty to fourteen. Yeah, and 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 let's not let's not underplay that too. That was a forty eight yard scramble for a yeah. touchdown on Hawkins' part. Yeah. That, yep. that was pretty impressive. It's like when he got, you know, when he got to the line and just got beyond the line, then he put it in second gear and he was right. just gone. He got a little bit of his daddy speed in him, you know. <laughs> yes, he, he did. So <laughs> thank you, thank you, Dad. Yeah, thanks for passing <laughs> that along, Mike. We appreciate <laughs> we, that. We appreciate that a lot. Uh, and then it was just a matter of getting the game over you know it's 50 to 21 the eagles end up with a field goal later um and yeah, braswell scores with one touchdown you know, late in there in the fourth quarter to make it a 53 28 game that's where it ends up and braswell goes home for the year and the eagles are headed to the playoffs you know almost 500 yards of total offense yep. for allen um 226 passing and the rest on 266 the 266 on the ground. Yeah. You know, 30, 32 rushes. Pretty balanced effort on Allen's part in terms of offense. Yeah. Um, you know, Braswell, uh, obviously, they had 53 rushes for almost the same yards, 287 yards. But so they had a harder time. Out of that number, mm-hmm. Burton only had 43 yards. You That's know, right. 1,600 yard rusher had 15 carries. He only averaged 2.8 yards a carry. Uh, Jerian Wallace, who was their leading receiver with well over a thousand yards, only had 55 yards, four catches for 55. Yeah, so good, so, good job defense. Yeah, you know, and again, a lot of these yards were second half yards, and that, that they gave up, and that's that's that will tend to happen because Braswell played their starters well deep into the to the, the fourth quarter until the quarterback got hurt. Well, <laughs> they, they, they weren't the same team this year as they were last year. No, I no, mean, they we'd weren't. We'd never seen them before. It was the first time we played them last year, and I was quite shocked. By yeah. how well they played. Yeah, they were scrappy. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Well, and, and as we heard some storytelling um, up in the stands, there's a lot of scrapping going on over in Denton Braswell. Yeah, there is. And some, uh, of, some it, of it uh, planned, some really of it bad. not yeah. planned. That's scary. Y'all cut that out over there. Yeah. I mean, seriously. Kids, get your act together. Stop. Don't do that. Yeah. Be good. Let's just say that. Yeah, be good. Um, as far as the district results go, uh, oh my gosh, Geyer yeah. had the week off, which I still don't think was fair. Let's just say a word about our district first. I mean, okay. We talked about parity in the district. We we're did. See, we're seeing a lot more even um, results and even play, but it's seesaw play. I mean, it's like you know, Jekyll and Hyde. One time, you know, Prosper whips us, and then Prosper gets beat. And only scores one time. Quarterback. One time on a defensive touchdown. Uh, defensive, yeah, exactly. Their offense Bumble did recovery for a touchdown did not score. Now again, like you said, Harrison Roser. Yep, he was play. not. He was not playing. Now, did they hold him out or was he injured? Don't know. Don't know. Don't know. We don't know the answer to that. And we don't talk about that. But you really, I don't know. As a coach, I'm just like, I don't want to go into the playoffs with a loss. That's right, and especially getting beat by Boyd. Now Boyd's not that bad, but to get beat 35 to seven. Yeah, that's a spanker. It right wasn't there. even competitive. When that's you a look thad. That's a thad dingler spanker. How many total yards? Did they, you said they had like two hundred and seven. Uh, two hundred and seven total yards, and 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 Boyd had two hundred fifty total yards. No, yeah. so it was not a prolific well offensive game in no. terms of, of yards. <laughs> yeah, Prosper had four turnovers. Of turnovers. One of them was a pick six, and the other I think two fumbles fumble and returned. two passes. Two fumbles, fumble two passes. Fumbles returned for a touchdown. And all of them lost. That was so. their only points was defensive points. Yeah, yeah. So. That game goes on. McKinney beats Little Elm last night, which I'm surprised by. You said it was 30. You had that score. Yeah. Little Elm only scored 14 or 16. Uh, we were expecting more out of Little Elm, or maybe maybe McKinney stepped up more than uh, than what might have been expected. McKinney, 35, 21. 21. Okay. That's pretty good to hold that Little Elm team to only 21. And again, did they have everybody playing? You don't know. Right. But that. So your district ends up Allen at six and one, right? Yeah, you know, Geyer at six and one, but Allen wins district based upon their win over Geyer. Mm-hmm. Third place team is Boyd, by virtue Which, of their 
their win over Prosper. I was going to say shock, but not not really. Eight and two overall. Boyd was eight good. and two. Yep. Joe McBride working his magic. I yep. know. Pretty good. So they Getting lost. Better, better. They lost to Guyer and Allen. Yep. Wow. Well, there's no shame in that. Mm-mm. Not all. They play tough. I mean, they do. They're they a tough team. Um, well, and they're going to get a they're going to get a matchup in the playoffs. Yeah, and then so Little Elm and Braswell. I don't know who fin. I think Braswell finished in fifth place, five and five, with Little Elm coming in after them, and yep. McKinney bringing up the rear. Five and five and five and five. Right. Yeah. Braswell and Little Elm. So Allen Geyer, Prosper, and Boyd. And Boyd. Right. Those Boyd are your four Boyd. district playoff teams. But hey, let's talk about the parody from our children down south. <laughs> <laughs> Please do. All, all three Plano schools finished tied. They did. One yeah. and six. One yeah. and six and one and one six. One and six in district. One and six. And, and a, I, I'd have to go back and look. I know, obviously, is that a round robin thing on who they beat? Because you had to beat another Plano school. Yeah. Well, West, they play West was the best of them all because their overall was four and six. Okay. Four and six. The other two were two and eight. Four and six and one and six. I'm just so hurt and shocked. <laughs> <laughs> and that was so sincere and so, and so, on your and, part. And, and, and as an overall record, the one and six, those two teams, East and, and Plano, were two and six overall record, right? No, two and eight. Two and eight? Two and eight. Two and eight. Okay, so two and eight. So you get eight total wins between those schools if you look at the, the record. So they couldn't oh. even be an eight-win team all together so yeah let's combine all all five thousand five thousand five thousand you get a fifteen thousand anyway yeah that was my idea who's you're gonna have coach and that's the question turn collin creek mall into the new new high school school. there you go (laughs) maybe we could have like a coach by committee the three coaches could be like chained together at the wrist (laughs) the three three students and they're up and they're up there doing this see no evil paper scissors no evil (laughs) you know it's it's hard to fathom that I don't. From I schools. really don't want them to be that bad, especially because you know what's no, coming. Realignment. I, I know. Yeah. Realignment, I redistricting. I, I'm it's, just. It's a very big possibility. I'm just blown away that it's just like no big deal. Yeah. You don't hear any stink about it from anybody about you know putting their foot down, saying this has yeah. got to end. You know, I mean, it, honest to goodness, Big Matt, this is to you. We really, really want Plano East to be competitive. We do. We want Plano to be competitive. We want West to be competitive. Yeah, we really we do. want that. And stuff outside of like tennis and track, and chess and club. baseball, and yeah. I mean, football's a Texas. It's it's the granddaddy sport in Texas. You got to admit it is. And you it's want... your crown jewel sport. Yeah, it is. Okay, who's a, who was the Plano guy on the boards that was for the forever that would was oh, drinking? Plano Wildcat fan Steve and, and Steve Olmer. Steve Olmer and. Does he not exist anymore? Oh, who knows? No, he gave up. But <laughs> he did actually say something about our 7,000 snapshot number. But, anyhow, Plano schools had a rough year, all three of them. And, snapshot right here. You know, Plano East had injuries late in the year, which made it very difficult for them. True. And, you know, West started out 3-0. and And so they finished 1-6 and you know one and six over the last seven games. And Yeah, the, I mean, you, you had they had great hopes. Starting out with that, the, you know, three win. It's just brutal. So, but that is an issue because you look at that going forward. Like you say, realignment is, is coming up in the spring, and, and there's a good possibility that Allen gets grouped back with those three schools again. And Which is the prelude to the 7A. Yeah. Don't think we see 7A this time. Nah. But it's coming. I don't um, think you'll ever see it. I, I, I think next alignment after I, this next one. I don't think the UIL can. You how, know, can you, how can you put together. The, it's gonna be a lot travel, of traveling. The travel cost and the in the what it'll take to get, you it's know, mostly at forty dollars a yeah, gallon. Cause, say, you know, because basketball plays on Monday night and Friday night. Well, Friday night's fine, but Monday night, if you've got a, you know, four hour bus ride. All right. So what, what about game, what about this scenario? We have a, a a Democratic governor that gets elected as governor of Texas. And he mandates. What have you been smoking? <laughs> he mandates splitting schools. So there's a mandate. There's an executive order to mandate that Allen splits their schools. Either and, that or Allen can't state, play. And the state's going to pay for it. No split, no pay. Where are you going to build it? Build what? The school. That's not our problem. That's that's the taxpayers' problem. We'll pass a bond. Oh, we're in Lucas. We'll pass a bond. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll just Allen was annex. Uh, what it, what is well, Lucas, Lucas, what did Lucas somebody is, tell me the other year? Oh, Lucas when Ashley Pickle, money. 
Yeah, actually, actually pickle, pickle and I had some little combo this week. And she goes, "Well, why don't you split schools like the rest of the state?" Doc said, "We already did. It's called Lovejoy." <laughs> That's a fact. I'm like, Ba-ding. oh, I wish I'd have thought of that because that would have been awesome. But yeah, I don't know. It, 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 I don't, I don't know. If, I just don't foresee that ever happening because the cost no. will be so much and the the wear on the kids and all that just because of the, the amount of traffic. It, it's fun. It's distance. fun for it's fun for the talking heads to yeah. to talk about to pontificate it. Pontifical, pontificate. <laughs> yeah, whatever. What he said. So it's a uh, playoff time. Yeah, and so what are the pairings? Prosper gets uh, what'd you say? Flower Mar- Mound Flower Marcus, Marcus. Okay. who won their district with a victory over Louisville a couple weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Um, Allen gets, but that's the D one. It's D two. D two. The All other right. the other D two game is Denton Geyer uh, versus Flower Mound, who who beat Capel last night to get into the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And they were five and five overall. They're five and five. Um, They've got a good quarterback. He's committed to the University of Florida, yep. uh, Nick Evers. But beyond that, um, I don't think he has a lot of help around him. So, Geyer should take care of business there. They should. Depending what Prosper team shows up against Marcus, I could see them beating Marcus. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I definitely see them beating Marcus. Depending upon which team Dep- shows yeah. up. I don't think it's going to be just a you know, cause forgive, given thought that they will. They lost four games this year, you know, and, and – you know, they lost to Guyer. They lost to South Lake. Excuse me. You know, they lost to Boyd. Um, you, you just wonder. Well, they didn't lose to Allen, so. Oh, well, there you go. There's that. Yeah, there is that. Um, Stick that and then Allen gets a five. And that's probably and... what they were saying after the game last night. Wow. Yeah. We, we may have lost, Allen. but we didn't lose to Allen. Yeah. Well, I mean, how, how, how nice was <laughs> would that have been to to be the Boyd fan saying <laughs> overrated. Yeah, for real. <laughs> oh, you know, that that been great. I was telling Mark that we should have just we should have gone last night. Well and if if nine like twenty twenty yeah. wore all this and sat on the side. Was that the crown jewel? It was at the crown jewel. It was. Yeah. And um, we could stand up there and say, overrated. Yeah. <laughs> so we could like start the chant. Yeah. yeah. Allen gets a five and five Hebron team. Right. Um who I texted these guys last night. I was doing some research. They have not beat a team with a winning record all year. Three of their victories were against the Plano schools. Yeah. Plus so that's, that's Ka- like plus Coppell, who was four Cumulative, and six. that's one victory. Yeah. yeah. So four of their five victories, you know, were in district against, against teams. Against losing teams. Losing records. Um, but but you know, there again, it, you got to watch out with those five and five teams. You do. Brazil's not dumb. It's not that you don't get ready for them. It's mm-hmm. just I don't think this team's as good. Now they, you know, they played Louisville well last night. And for those of mm-hmm. you who did not see, because we were paying close attention to that, because once once it, it got pretty evident pretty quick that Capel oh wasn't going to beat Flower Mound. They were down twenty one points in the right. first half, and you're like, okay. It's, so we need to turn our attention to the Hebron Louisville game because Allen gets the loser of that game. Yeah. This know, is that not game. that it was not your father's cop no. So Hebron gets up fourteen to nothing, starting out. Louisville comes back to tie it up, and then it's just a, a back and forth. Right. And the real the real the real <coughs> drama starts when it's twenty eight twenty one, and and Louisville is behind. They are, and and so Louisville ends up kicking a field goal. And what do they do when you? What do you do when you're behind and the game is like winding down? What do you do an onside kick. kick? They recover the onside kick, five plays, TD, and so now all of a sudden, you know, the, it, it's 28-24. They score the touchdown. Now it's 31 to 28. So right. Louisville is winning. All right. And you kick it away, and Hebron gets the ball with about 90 seconds left, and you figure, oh my gosh, they've got 90 seconds to get down there and score. And win the game. Or and, kick a field goal to tie Or kick a field goal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so what do they do? They drive down <laughs> and they score. They score a touchdown. And it's got, what, 16, 15, 15, 15, seconds, 15 left. seconds left. To and you figure, yeah. you know, some people were like posting messages. Yeah, I'd, I'd, already, turned off, I'd, already, turned, I'd already turned off the Guilty. phone and said, <laughs> all right, it looks like we're playing Louisville. And so I saw I saw you and text ding, that ding, score. Ding, and ding, I ding, went ding. and checked. And I was like, 37-35. <clears throat> Not so quick, Kimo Yeah. I was like, what? <laughs> what? So I went back and let Matt Welch was at the game. Oh, thank you, Matt Welch, for the video. Yeah. That was good. It was good. And he has the winning touchdown on a 40 yard Hail Mary as time expired. My question was How did they the, get to the 40? How did they get to the 40? Because there was only 15 seconds left when Hebron kicked off. So squib kick, short, Poops. 30 yard return, you know, on that squib kick yeah. to the to the 
40, to the Hebron 40. Which is where I, I'm going to stop for a second because yeah, yeah, I want to yeah. insert Caden Williams here. Okay. Because. Thank God, Caden. Put Allen in that situation. 15 seconds left. You're up by, you right. know. You're starting out at your 25. Yeah. Chances of doing a Hail Mary from that distance are very much exactly. slimmer. Much but slimmer. Hebron didn't kick it deep. They kicked it to the 30-yard line. The guy returned it 30 yards, and all of a sudden you've got a chance. And so Caden's going to kick the ball out of the end zone. That's right. Touchback. It, it's a whole different world at that point. And so even though it doesn't take any time off the clock, you don't have a chance of a run back. And so right. it's just like, thank you, Caden, for being around. So, yeah, Louisville – the guy catches it. He has to come back towards the quarterback. There's three. There are three defenders. They were playing defense, prevent defense. Three defenders back there. He gets thrown short. What does he do? He circles around them all, and there's just a, a little red a sea between all these. Yeah, but he doesn't defenders. actually score the touchdown. I don't well, think he does. No, and his, it, his butt is down, and where's the ball? Before the goal line. I think it is. But his back is to the goal line. The ball is here. We don't have and he replay. Falls into the end zone. We don't have replay in uh, high school football. So. Either way, I'm glad to be playing Hebron again because I like to see Coach Brazel yeah. get upset. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I got my binoculars. He's too. one of I'm my keeping eye Ever on since that time at UIL, he oh said what gosh. he said about having to be in Allen's district. <laughs> you know, why don't you just bend me over now, you know? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> You know, it's a quote that'll live in infamy for me. We, we really do appreciate that it. That and the Claude Mathis uh, Oh, my God. The headphones. headset throwing. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. So that, that puts the playoffs in. Um, looking ahead, which we do now, because the brackets will come out this week, but the winner of the Allen Hebron game will play the winner of Lake Highlands and South Grand Prairie. Now, South Grand Prairie is starting to be, you know, we've, we've played South Grand Prairie several times in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Haven't lost to them, thank right. goodness. But that Lake Highlands team this year was undefeated until like two weeks ago or Jesuit beat them. Right. Um, and they're a pretty good team. And it'll be, that, that will actually be a very good first-round game. South Grand Prairie is always tough. I think they're 6-4 and four this year. The interesting world will play that game too, though. Well, it certainly won't be the Boneyard. Memorial. Kim. Kim. Oh, yeah. We're not doing a home-and-home. Home. Again, oh, Memorial will be great. I, I, yeah. I just – for the That's love of all memorial things, for all holy, you band parents. please, no playoff games at a baseball field. Please. Please. Please, The please, baseball please. venues are such a beatdown for Either the fans. One of, I you know, know it's and, about the kids. And they're but, talking about that whole new, you know, at Globe Life now. But if you look at the configuration of that, the stands are so far away from the from the actual. And then the, the oh. angle of the seats in the, in the in, you know, for the fans and is the Choctaw. horrible. Horrible. It is. It's horrible. You're always turning one direction the whole game because the field is not in front of you. It's and you're very low. You're low, and you're much further away. Yeah. You know, ten, ten rows awesome. back, you're much further away than. So please, than please, you know, please. I, I say as bad as the seats were when we were there before and sat low, we'd go high this time if we were there. I don't, know. I don't want to go. There. I don't know. I just don't want to go. There's so many football stadiums. Let's play in them. Yeah. You know, SMU. Let's play an outdoor. SMU's great. Let's play an outdoor venue. When was the last time we played at SMU? It's been a Skyline. Long time. It's been a while. Skyline game, Kyler yeah. years. Well, uh, Skyline. Uh, didn't we have a? Uh, didn't we have no? Yeah, Skyline. I think game. it was Skyline. It was. Wow, Skyline's the last time, time we played there. Time's a flying, bro. This it eight, is eight years. Yeah, SMU's got a good team this year. Me <laughs> too. Uh, shout out to our buddy over in Forney. Yeah. You know Forney. Uh, JF. Forney did not win a game last year. You've heard us say that before. Coach Fleener goes over there, and they. They, they were skeptical about him. They were. They didn't know what they were getting because he was at Mesquite. That was mixed results there. And uh, and their their preseason golf tournament, we went and, and <laughs> spent a little time with them. Yeah. And we told them, we told you what you were getting, Forney. Yep, we did. Do you believe us now? Are you believers? They were 6-3. and three. They got beat last week by Ennis, who's state-ranked. Um, tough game. Completely so, expected. So they had Royce City coming in, who has only had one loss. Their one loss being to Ennis. And this, this game was for second versus third position in the That's district. Right. Um, and I, I follow it on Friday Night Football. I look up at halftime. It's 20-7 to 7 Roy City. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh. Uh, is, hey, is, is the momentum really going against yeah. them, or is it just kind of a fluke? You finish 6-4, and four, you know what? Those people are thrilled. Mm -hmm. By golly, those guys did not come back and win that game 30-20. to 20. Isn't that amazing? So... Forney goes from zero and eight or nine. I don't know they didn't play ten games last year to seven and three. Finished second to Ennis in that district. Right, and so now your first seed in the playoffs. No, being second. 
They were seven. No, because they were seven. They're already two. in D2. They finished seven to two. Five okay. A. They split. Remember? No, seven okay. to three. Yeah. Seven and three for the year. I don't know who they'll play in the playoffs next week, but it is a it is a home game. I saw mm-hmm. Fleener tweeted. You know, come to City Bank next week. Mm-hmm. Um, but so basically, what you're saying. So Ennis Ennis is is D two also. Yeah. That, okay. So you got one and you know first and second in D two, and so Ennis. Yeah. All right. All right. I understand. So. They get to play next week at a seven and three team. So congrats to the Forty Jackrabbits. Yeah, Corey Kane won his last game too. Who did they play last? Congratulations, Corey. Somebody. Somebody. Uh oh, we got a pontificate here. They'll figure it out. So how about them Rangers? Oh, New York Rangers. We're talking hockey. Hey, I like that hockey jersey. Yeah, Dallas Stars. It's hockey season, brother. It is hockey season. They started. They're not playing very well, but they started. You not find it there, David? No, it was a mystery game. <laughs> they played an unknown uh, opponent. West Mesquite. Okay. West Mesquite. Yeah. Well, congratulations, Corey Kane and, and your Sherman Bearcats. Yeah. First. Um, first season up in Sherman. Look for good things there. Um, Building momentum with those guys, yeah, I love it. So, so what else we got? Anything else? We what, what else do we need to talk about? Raylan Sharp came by the tailgate. Who? Raylan Sharp. That was yep. nice to see. Raylan, yeah, our buddy Raylan. Yeah, um, sure. It's nice to see the guys that are loyal and come back and yeah, talk to us and we stuff. We really appreciate that. Unlike the guys that don't, <laughs> you know, like. Unlike the like guys, that everybody. Don't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's a lot more that don't do, it. you know. But you, you know, everybody's got. Well, and, and you know, we got a bunch of, of former players out on the field too. Quentin Mobley and, and uh, um, um, Norris. Um, gosh, first name. Not oh, Chuck. coach. Not Chuck. Yeah, Chuck. Wouldn't that be cool to have Chuck Norris as your coach? What about uh, 75 years old? Do we know how Booty's doing? He started out doing really well this year. General Booty? He you was know, I some, don't. He was getting some D2, D3 yeah. school offers, but right. he's at Tyler Junior College. He is? JC. He was tearing he was it up like first the number year. two ranked quarterback. And yeah. If you'll hang on just one second, I'll give you a nation, wasn't it? And yeah, he, yeah. Was, he was playing very well. Uh, football right here with Tyler Junior College. Oh, man. They don't have stats. What is up with that? Let's see how they finished up here. They we'll either fill in with some video one, or we'll, two, we'll three, cut this part four, out. Five. They're five and three. Uh, four and two in. And they've got one more game left. They're off this week. And then they play. Oh, wait, no, they played today, I'm sorry, at Kilgore. Okay. Good um, luck against Kilgore. Yeah, they don't have uh, stats on there. Or maybe they do under more. Nope, they don't. So I can't tell you. Which is... Yeah, best of luck to him. Yeah, we like Jim. Yeah, I like him. He's been a good friend to us. Um, yeah, they don't have stats on here, so we'll no. just have to do without so, Friday night, 7 o'clock, Allen versus Hebron. Get your right. tickets before Tuesday or... Or lose them. Or don't. Or, yeah, or don't. And um, then find out. We uh, we have good news to report on our buddy Allen. Yes, we do. Pierce, he's getting out of his rehab facility on Monday. Yep. Did he ever respond to you? No, nope, never did. He must be in PT yeah. right now. Yeah. Call him right now. And... Uh, He's getting his lung function back. They're they're weaning him off of supplemental oxygen, which is good. And yeah, well, you know, we'll see what happens. We're just we're just super happy for him because he went through some, some dark days, man. Life threatening dark days. He really did. It was uh, it was no fun for the man. I can tell you that. So hopefully he'll come home Tuesday. And you know, he even texted me yesterday or Monday. Well, reached Alan right. If you leave your name and number. Record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. How dare you not be available to talk to on the podcast? <laughs> oh, dude. You think you'd be like working out or something? Getting some 
lung action going on. Lung action. Talk Breathe to you in. later. Bye. Bye. So, right. um, what else? hopefully, you know, he talked about, hey, maybe I can come to the game Friday night. I said, dude, whatever you need, we'll, we'll get you yep. there. Whatever you want to come. There's no way his wife will let him get out of the house and go to the uh, football game. I don't know. That's just not going to happen. Or who wears pants oh, in the great. family? Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> the, only, the, only way, the only way he would uh, get to go is if she went and she, she doesn't go. So. Yeah, we'll see. Well, we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll, we'll see, see what happens. happens. Weather's going to be a little warmer next week than it is this week. So yeah. uh, It was a nice cold cold game. The it was cold. The, the seafood feast there. What the heck? They're in Cincinnati. Why are they eating oh seafood? Yeah, we're looking at game day. So, anyhow, folks, uh, appreciate you listening. We love you. We love you. Hang in there. Hang in there. We got one more game. Even next you week. no voters, we love you too. Yeah. Get yourself right. Time. Get, Get yourself right. Figure it out. So, guys, until next week. Oh, one other thing. Well, ba- the basketball team. Oh, love the basketball team. They're in Wichita Falls this morning. Great yep. enthusiasm. Playing the tournament for all you travelers. Safe travels. Yep. They've Good actually luck. already played one game. They started at 9 o'clock, actually, I think. And their mm-hmm. next game's at 1045, and they play another one at 1230. Or 12.45. So, good luck to those guys. We'll have results next week. We'll get with the coaches and figure out how they did up there. Uh, it be interesting to see this team. Uh, it was fun meeting all those kids. It was. Last week. And, Got some uh, characters out there. They do. And uh, it'll be fun to see how they, they come together and, and uh, how Coach Sip gets those guys playing together as the season progresses. So, good luck to them. And safe travels back home. And uh, we will talk to you all next week. So, until next time. We're out of here. It's over, and we be out. Peace.